over at Marvel. Mm -hmm. Somebody has left a certain department who oh. they say was the cause of a lot of toxicity that was going on over there. Uh, let so me they, see they let go of somebody who was fucking up. Victoria Alonzo. Never heard of her. I don't like that name, Alonzo. I already don't trust somebody. No, I love that name, actually. That's why I don't trust, trust certain people. Okay. <laughs> Alonzo, I always think of Denzel from uh, Training of Day. Of course. That's, yeah. He owns that name now. Yeah, anybody named Alonzo, Alonzo. don't trust you no. at all. Was reportedly singularly responsible for the toxic work environment within Marvel's VFX departments. She, re she would reportedly give work to teams she liked, but if you pissed her off in any way, you're going to get frozen out. Wow, it's dead. So he says she's left the studios. She was president of physical post-production VFX and animation at the studio, and now her ass is gone. Wow. That's what they say. Damn, she was single-handedly <clears throat> responsible for this whole thing. Wow. Yes. Yes, she wow. did it all herself. Oh, that's, that's what I'm with, saying. That's crazy. She everybody with one hand. Damn. Just single-handedly. <laughs> just going around slapping <laughs> people. Right. You know, they're going through the same thing that a lot of visual effects companies are going through. They're yeah. going through the same thing a lot of video game companies are going right. through. Crunch culture. Crunch culture, yes. That was a big thing back in the, well, shoot, back when I was in the video game industry, when in the 90s, 2000s, you know, it was not it was not unheard of for you uh, when the time around the game is released that week to be at, you know, your job for 24 yeah. hours. See here. Yeah, uh, Victoria Alonzo, long time and high profile Marvel Studios executive whose time with the company dates back to the first Iron Man has left the studio. Multiple sources tell The Hollywood Reporter. Okay, that's, that's a respected uh, publication. Alonzo had been the comp had been with the company since the earliest days of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, establishing an enviable an, envi an enviable seventeen year run and watching the studio grow from operating above a Mercedes Benz dealership in Beverly Hills to being acquired by Disney. During her tenure, the MCU became the highest grossing franchise in film history. Well, that making us sound like a hero. Yeah. Well, that, well, making us sound like she's good. Where's, where's the dirty stuff? Yeah. Where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the single handedness? I yeah. Want to hear that part. Where, where the, yeah, where the bitch slaps at? <laughs> Alonzo has served as executive producer on Marvel's subsequent releases and also worked on its Disney Plus TV series. In 2021, she was prompted to president physical and post production visual effects and animation production. Last year, she also produced the Oscar nominated international. Feature, Argentina, 1985. All right. Her departure comes in the shadow of Ant-Man the Wasp. Oh, okay, now we're getting... Not, not, okay, now I don't know about the toxic environment that she created. I don't hear anything about that here. Right. But I was just talking about Ant-Man, and I was just talking about how are people feeling about Ant-Man. Right. Because the box office, you know, it's it doesn't look like what Marvel would be satisfied with. Right, right, no. She says here, and I quote... Let's hear it. As long as I'm at Marvel Studios, I will fight for representation. <laughs> Why she's Martin Luther King, I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. That's, all, that's the only voice I can do listen, right every now. Time you, every time you're fighting for some type of equality, you got to speak like Martin Luther MLK Luka. comes yes, through. you got to. As long <laughs> as I... <laughs> yeah, use words too. As long. <laughs> uh... She's gay. That's why she said that. Oh, okay. She was named one of People in Espanol's magazine's most influential Hispanic women in 2019 and 2020 and has been featured in The Hollywood Reporter's Women in Entertainment Power 100 and multiple lists. Oh, there so it is. I, I don't know. I don't Are we know. sure about this it's, toxic environment? Yeah, because it's not like people love her. Chris Lee says she held a crazy amount of power. Oh. Big, Not just walking around, but Bigfoot. <laughs> like she walked around that studio like this. <laughs> you know that Bigfoot picture? I don't know what everybody was shit. Goddamn, you don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> She's bitch slapping people, walking around, <laughs> stepping on people with a big feet. <laughs> Kevin Feige and Victoria Alonzo personally approve every single shot, all the visual effects work, which is usually the job of a director or a showrunner, one tech told me. Uh, here's another thing here. Uh, the main one that everybody's quite scared of is Victoria Alonzo, another tech said. Mm -hmm. If she likes you, you're going to get work and you're going to move up in the industry. If you have pissed her off in any way, you're going to get frozen out, which is what we just uh -huh. read a little while ago. Wow. Uh, 
And the news of the toxic environment was from this reporter that works for Vulture, is what uh, Mr. Yaz man said. Oh, uh, okay. Well, Vulture don't care. Vulture don't care. Yeah, yeah, well, hence the name Vulture. Hence the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. All this seems to be like hearsay right now. And I'm not, not, I'm not saying it's not true, but I don't see any big sources saying this. Right. In fact, I see one source on here that, that no, change that to two that I don't trust at all. Oh, no. It's interesting kind of cool to, you know, to, I mean, you know, have a, discuss, a discussion over, but I'm not one of those people who like to, like, engage in, you know, messy talk unless I really know what's happening. Yeah, especially, and that, especially nowadays. Yeah, that's, like, they're not, no one's talking about this. Now that, she should be fired on <laughs> that right there. That, that, now that right there. <laughs> Fuck the toxic environment. Talk about these, these toxic effects over here. That shit look terrible. <laughs> I've been calling Marvel out for a while about some of the effects that they've been doing, man. I mean, some of these effects have been terrible, and some of these effects I've, I've been okay with. Uh, mm -hmm. as, you know, as far as as far as enjoying the show, I try not to let it stop me. But you know, like, um, is there a big one that stands out? Yeah, I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna pull it up here. Let me see. Okay. You do revert back to Gen Four when you sleep. Was the air horn really necessary? Now, you know, I'm looking at her right here, and I'm mm -hmm. thinking. It's a TV show. Right. So that's why I didn't really like Lose pick it, it apart yeah. too much. It's a TV show, but I thought some parts with her looked terrible. Right, yeah. I'm just gonna tell you. And I didn't I didn't let it affect my enjoy, my enjoyment of the show. You know, and some and, and some parts look good. Like there was some motion capture parts where I thought the actor was really coming through the actress was really coming through on that. It was it was little. yeah, it was getting a little bit too much for me. It was because everything just started to just be just you know, the movies start drowning in special effects at this point. That's what oh, I thought was going on yeah, with Ant Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it was so much. It just started to feel really fake at this point, where <laughs> Marvel was giving me worlds that I believed in. You know, these yeah, fantastic yeah. worlds. You know, it's, uh, they started getting to the weaker end. Like I don't have nothing against Guardians mm -hmm. of the Galaxy. Uh, mm -hmm. The effects are there, kind of cool. But you know, it, it started looking like the like a weaker Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's a case where you know, like in Guardians of the Galaxy, we see these establishing shots that gives you, uh, I guess, the sense of okay, boom, here's where we're going to. Wow, let's live in and cut to live action and we're walking around a set. Yeah, right? so that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the Quantum Realm. You know, it is, you know, that stabbing shot is the whole show, <laughs> right? And uh, it doesn't look lived in after a while. You know, it looks like just, you know, uh, fake, like you said. Some things are just no excuse for, for man. I think, you know, if y'all... You're going to leave Modoc alone. Yeah, we, you know, if you're going to put these the arms and legs on a baby head. <laughs> I think that Marvel's starting to feel a lot of fallout from tone in their movies. Mm, Everything yeah. is just way too jovial now. Uh, except for Black Panther. Right. Uh, I think, you know, the, the effects are starting to blend. And, you know, I think uh, I think people are just, uh, there's it's too much going on with Marvel, too, yeah, with the it, shows and everything. You know what? It, I put it this way, man. You know, the, the those first 10 years, even up to Endgame, it felt like there was a hand on a wheel. Yeah. You know what I mean? There'll be one movie where, like, oh, oh shit, me get my hands back on, fall, fall asleep a little bit, let me put it back <laughs> on, you know what I mean? Whereas these, these newer phases, it's like, you know, they're falling off the cliff, you know what I mean? <laughs> they try to drive yeah, back up yeah. the hill and get their own yeah, yeah. So it doesn't seem like there's, you know, consistently, you know, forward momentum moving forward, you know what I mean? They didn't want to do any big kills because they didn't want to mimic, you know, Infinity War and Endgame, you know what I mean? Which I think was, was terrible. You know, how, what better way to show some sort of dominance or so some a strength of your enemy than to start killing some people off? Yeah. Make him look unfucking stoppable. Yeah, yeah. You Kane, know? this was supposed to be yeah. Kane's big introduction. This was supposed to this was supposed to get everybody excited about the new phase. Right. And this thing kind of fizzled, man. It did. And I understand that maybe this is not the end Kang that we'll get to at some point. I understand that. But you know, you have to show some sort of threat early. Yeah, you know? an Ant Man movie was just not the thing for King, man. I don't think I just, I hate to say it because I just I just it just didn't fit because it was still an Ant Man movie that didn't change from you know the tone that it was. It was a big family cartoon. Which yeah. look, I'm not. If people are happy with that, that's fine. I don't mm -hmm. care. It didn't work for me. Right. Apparently, it didn't work for a lot of people because now this is making you know I, I think it's got Marvel a little bit shook. Right. Especially if you're kicking out the big person that was, was responsible for so many hits. Yeah. You know, so this there's definitely something. I don't know about the toxic environment. I'm going to hold back before I say anything on that. But there's definitely something going on.